Hello, fifth grade. Um, welcome back. We are starting our next novel. This is called Kensuke's Kingdom. I look. I know it looks like it's spelled Kensuke's Kingdom, but um, this is actually a Japanese name, and we looked it up, and it's actually pronounced Kensuke's. Um, so just as an FYI, but. This is our next novel that we're reading. Um, this one has just 10 chapters, so um, it should be a relatively quick-ish read. Um, if you read the assignment sheet for today, you know that a majority of what we're focusing on this novel is two parts. So the first thing we're focusing on is fluency. Um, by fifth grade, you were reading a majority of the things um, that you need to read in your head, right? You're not reading it out loud, which is great and appropriate and exactly what you should be doing in fifth grade. However, as you look towards middle school, there are going to be times where they're going to ask you to present out loud, um, where being able to read out loud with fluency, intonation, all that kind of stuff is a great thing. So we just want you to practice a little bit of that as you're reading. Um, so really what we're asking is for each chapter of the book um, that you're reading, that you read about half of it out loud um, and that you... Uh, you can read the rest of it to yourself. So you can choose what that looks like out loud. That could be to an animal, to a sister or brother, to a parent, to your home teacher, whatever that works, um, just out loud in your room, totally fine. Um, but just that way you're practicing a little bit that skill so it stays fresh in your brain. So at this point, you should have already read chapter one, Peggy Sue. Um, we are introduced to several characters, um, which is a great thing. And so um, we want to make sure that as we're reading, we have some uh, great thoughts as we're going, right? So you have met Michael. Um, you have met um, his dog, Stella Ortois, or heard about him, and his two parents. So after you've read this story, um, I want you to pull out your, um, your packet, and we're going to look at pages four and five in your packet. Um, I went ahead and wrote mine out so that this video wasn't 18, <laughs> 18 minutes long. Um, so I went ahead and wrote mine pretty quickly so that we could kind of go through it. So for this, the other thing, when we talked to all the sixth grade language arts teachers, one of the things they said was using the race strategy that was really important um, and that they used a lot of in um, sixth grade. So we wanted to give you an opportunity to practice um, a lot with the race strategy so that um, you felt really comfortable and confident going into sixth grade. You could kind of hit the, the ground running. Because of that, I, we know that those are meaty. That is the only thing that you're doing for each chapter. Okay, so um, like for example, for chapter one, you have literally just one question to answer. You fill out the graphic organizer, you're gonna write it on this page, done. Um, there is an additional questions that you have to. So we're trying to pull as much off your plate as we can um, as we go. So let's talk through what we're looking for when we um, are talking about these, um, these race questions. So you have a graphic organizer. I really like this because as you're reading, it allows you to jot down information. I went ahead and did mine in full sentences just so you could see. However, um, if it's easier for you to jot in bullet points, in notes, um, whatever that looks like is fine. This is your planning page. The only thing we're going to be grading about this is that you did it, right? That you took some time to plan it. You didn't just write it and we're done, right? You really were very thoughtful about your answers. That's it. So however this works best for you, do it. Um, this is what we will be grading um, in terms of uh, for the actual content. Okay, so let's get started. Um, if it were me and I was reading this, I would first read the question. So it says in chapter one, the letter that Michael's parents receive is the cause. What is the effect on Michael's parents? I would read that first. And then I would go through and I would read chapter one in Kinski's Kingdom. As I'm reading this, um, I would be looking for quotes, right? So remember part of the race strategy is being able to cite specific evidence from the book that proves your answer. So as I'm reading, um, first I would wanna look for an answer if I wasn't sure of it. Um, and then I would look for some sort of quote that proves it, okay? So again, you've already read this chapter, so we're just gonna jump into it. So if you notice in this first box, <clears throat> we kind of uh, made it one long box because oftentimes the R part of um, the race strategy where you're restating the question and then the A part of it where you answer the question, typically that is combined within one to two sentences, okay? So uh, that's why we have it as one box um, that you can have um, for you to use. So again, I'm going to just talk through this, but if at any point you want to pause it and write it down, um, that way you don't have to create it on your own, I think that is a great idea. So 
Pause the video when you need to, otherwise stick with me. So the question we're gonna restate, Michael's parents received a letter um, that the Brickworks, where they both worked, was closing. This caused Michael's dad to buy a boat and sail around the world. Okay, so I have restated my question and then I've answered it, right? The letter was the cause. Because of the letter, he ended up buying this boat and sailing around the world with me so far. In this case, I ended up, um, because I added a little bit of additional details, it ended up being two sentences, but sometimes very well, um, your answers are going to be one to two and that's okay. Okay, so pause the video if you need to. Okay, as I was reading, I came across a quote that I thought as I read it, I was like, oh, this is a great thing. This really proves that it caused him to buy this boat and sail around the world, okay? So the quote was on page 10. Uh, the quote was, if I hadn't lost my job, I'd never have dared to do it, not in a million years, okay? So that proves that because he lost his job, he decided to buy a boat and sail around the world. Okay, so you're gonna add a little sentence stem. So you can use um, some of the some of them that we have. Um, some of you have them already in your binder. There's one on page three of your packet if you wanted to. I just started with the author states, if I hadn't lost my job, I'd never have dared to do it, not in a million years. Okay, so now we've done the restating of the question. We've answered the question. We've cited our sources. Now this is the like, mamma jamma part, right? This is the part that means the most because this one, you're taking everything and you're tying it up in a nice little neat bow. So this one is how you're proving that your quote like answers the question, okay? Someone could just pull a random quote and just be like, um, you know, well, um, the rainbow comes after the rain and that doesn't necessarily prove uh, this question, right? So being able to make sure that you're having a quote that obviously makes sense and answers the question, but then also this is the part that's really important. When we talked to sixth grade teachers, this was the part that they noticed was a little bit of a weaker area um, coming into sixth grade. So they do a lot with you guys um, to beef that area up, but I thought, gosh, if we could do it in fifth grade, that would be all the better. It's easier for you in sixth grade. So we're looking for one to two sentences here that proves your answer, that we proves that this quote answers this question, okay? So I wrote, this shows that Michael's parents wouldn't have bought a boat and sailed around the world if the letter hadn't arrived, which told Michael's dad that he lost his job, okay? So it talks, it ties in this quote to the question that we've answered. Does that make sense? Okay, so now what you're gonna do, you could have copied mine exactly like this. You could have copied in bulleted points, um, but once you have read your, your book and, or the chapter and you have gone through and you have uh, figured out what you're writing in your graphic organizer, now you are going to turn this into this on page five, okay? And literally, in this case, you're just going to copy it down as you go. So my mine on chapter on page five, if I were to write it, it would say, Michael's parents received a letter that the brickwork from the that the brickworks where they both worked was closing. This caused Michael's dad to buy a boat and sail around the world. The author states, "If I hadn't lost my job, I'd never have dared to do it. Not in a million years." Page ten. Make sure that you're citing the page number also. This shows that Michael's parents wouldn't have bought a boat and sailed around the world if the letter hadn't arrived, which told Michael's dad that he lost his job. Period. Done. You move on. You're done with reading for the day. Okay, so those are kind of our expectations as we go. Um, we are going to do some of these in class um, together to make sure you're familiar with this, um, but really that's what we're looking for. So three, four, five-ish sentences um, is all you're doing in terms of answering questions about the book. Um, and then just again, practicing a little bit of um, your fluency as you go. Questions, reach out to your home teacher. Have a great day.